Hi boys and girls, it's Miss Amanda here and I'm gonna do the Sunday School lesson for you today. But first, I wanna start out with a little song for you guys. The Bible says in Philippians 4, 4, it says rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. So we have a really fun song that I used to sing when I was little and it's super fun. So everybody has to get up, get up, okay? And it goes like this, it goes, well, wait a minute, there's motions. So first we're gonna clap, then you can stomp your feet, you can shake your head. Every time we sing the song, we do a different motion. And before you know it, you're gonna be moving all over like fun. Are you ready? Okay, it goes like this. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Now let's add something else, like we'll stomp our feet and clap. So we say, rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Wasn't that fun? I'm getting out of breath here. You guys can sing this song at home and come up with your own motions and you can use that as a way to rejoice to God anytime you want, anytime during the day. So now that we got all the wiggles out, let's sit down. If you guys have a seat at home, sit down and we'll calm down. And now we can learn our wonderful story lesson. So let's pray really quick. Close your eyes. Dear God, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you that we just had an opportunity to learn a new song and rejoice to you. And we pray that you will be with us today, that you will help calm our, our hearts and open our minds so we can learn this new lesson about you. Thank you so much. And we pray to you in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so last week, Miss Sarah taught us a story about the grave. And she said, you know, where did he go? Where was Jesus, right? So we're following up on that story. And we learned that Jesus rose from the tomb, went to heaven, and was preparing a place for you, right? Well, you know, when that happened, all the disciples, everybody was super excited that Jesus had risen from the dead. And lots of people began believing in Jesus. But there was some people that this made very, very angry. Today, we are going to learn about one of those people. In fact, he was so angry, he started chasing after the Christians. He wanted to stop them. But do you think that God was going to let that happen? Uh-uh. God decided that he was going to send Jesus to go speak to this man. And so that is our story. This man's name is Saul. So we are going to read the story in the book of Acts, chapter 9. Acts is in the back, big 9. If you have a Bible and want to look it up, you can. So here goes. Meanwhile, Saul was breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogue so that if he found anyone who belonged to Jesus, man or woman, he might take them as prisoners. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed on him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Now get up, go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound, but they didn't see anybody. Saul got up from the ground. He opened his eyes, and he couldn't see anything. He was blind, so they led him by the hand into Damascus. For three days he was blind. He didn't eat or drink anything. So let's see. Were you paying attention to the story? I'm going to ask you a couple questions. Ready? What was the name of the person in the story? Saul. Saul, good job. <laughs> Whose voice did he hear when he fell onto the ground? Jesus. Jesus, that's right. Did the people around Saul see anybody talking? No. No. 
why couldn't Saul see anything when he opened his eyes? Because he was blind. He was blind. Right. Okay. So they led him to Damascus. Let's see what's going to happen next. Verse 10 says, in Damascus, there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called to him in a vision. Ananias. Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street. Ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, I've heard many things about this man. He has done harm to the holy people. He's come here with authority from the chief priest to arrest us. But the Lord said to Ananias, go. This man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here has sent me to you so that you can see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately something like scales fell off of Saul's eyes and he could see again. He got up, he was baptized, and after eating some food, he got his strength back. Then he spent several days with the disciples in Damascus, and at once he began to preach in the synagogues that Jesus was the Son of God. All those who heard him were astonished and asked, Isn't he the man who was capturing people in Jerusalem who called on his name? And hasn't he come here to take them as prisoners? Yet Saul grew more and more powerful, and he baffled the Jews living in Damascus by proving that Jesus is the Messiah. So, let's see if you were listening. Are you ready? Did Jesus ask Ananias to help Saul see again? Yes or no? Yes. Yes, that is right. What fell off of Saul's eyes when Ananias put his hands on him? Scales. Scales, good. Did Paul see again? Yes. Yes. Was Saul baptized after that? Yes. Yes. He learned about Jesus from the disciples and was so excited. Did Saul continue to be mean to the Christians or did he become a disciple for Jesus? He became a disciple of Jesus. That's right. He became a disciple. As soon as he got his sight back, he was so excited. He began to preach and teach and tell everybody about God. God truly changed Saul from one person to a totally different person in this story. It is so amazing. And you know what? His name changed too. Now we called him Paul. And Paul became one of God's greatest workers for his kingdom. He did so many good things. So you have to make sure that you tune in next week because you're going to hear another story about the life of Paul and what he did afterwards. So I hope you enjoyed this story, and if you get bored this week, remember, you can sing your Rejoice song, and you can clap and wiggle and do whatever you want to rejoice and praise God. I love you guys, and I hope I see you soon.